Welcome to Middleware Friday, episode 37, October 20th, 2017. Building custom connectors for logic apps. I'm Stefan Wiggers. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the ability to create custom connectors for logic apps. So this is a new feature recently added, enabling you to kind of wrap your own API or third party API into a custom connector that you can use within your logic app. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. And there is uh, no community content yet around this topic, so we do not have that. So custom connector. So there's some steps you need to follow. Some are mandatory, some are not, to, to build that connector for, to use within a logic app. So you build your RESTful API or your or you import one or you register one, then that's something I'm going to demonstrate later. But let's say you build your own, then it has to be a RESTful API. There can be an API app, there can be a function. Or um, when you talk about other APIs, then we go through the register process. But if you build your own using API and an API app or a function, then it has to be RESTful. And then you can secure that API using open standard like OAuth, or you can use an API key, or you secure it through API management, for instance. That's another way of, of securing your API. Then you describe it, and that's what you use Swagger for. That's pretty open and standard, and that's for RESTful APIs. And then you register connector, I already mentioned that. And that's something you can do within the Azure portal, which I will demonstrate later. And then you can start using your connector in your logic apps. You can also share your connector with others that they can use in a logic app, but you can also share it through the Microsoft Cloud in Flow or Power Apps. And then the last thing you can do, so the sharing and certifying is not mandatory. That's um, something you can do, maybe you don't have to do. But you can also certify your connector so through Microsoft itself, and then you send it off to Microsoft, which is also described in the documentation how you can do that. So this capability is available within the portal. So if you go to the portal and you look within the marketplace and you say, okay, look, uh, Logic Apps Connector, then you'll find it. And this is your starting point where you can create your Logic Apps Connector, your custom one. So let's do a demo. Let's create a custom connector or adapter for an weather API. So let's go online. The open weather map API. So this is one of the many APIs available around weather and I'm just using this one. You can log in and then you have your, the, then you get an API key and then you're able to call these operations that are available in that open weather API. And here's one that I have opened for a five day weather forecast or three hour weather forecast. And then you can get a forecast by city name or ID. Let's look at a city name and country code. So I'll go over to Postman and I'll show you, this is the weather map API. These are the query parameters, including the API ID. And I call it, so this is London, UK. And it looks like the weather forecast. This is today, looks clear sky, few clouds, scatters up, pretty decent weather for the next couple of days within London. Now this API, I want to wrap as a connector to be used in my logic app. So let's go to the connector itself. So I already did, um, did the step of where we create a logic app connector and then use, by default, this is open. Then you kind of have to edit because this is where you're going to start register your connector. And this could be that you upload an open API file or an open API URL that's the Swagger file you, you can upload or reference to. 
or you can upload a Postman collection version one. So this Open Weather Map API doesn't really have a Swagger file available, but still through using Postman, you can send out requests to that API and then collect the responses. And then you get something that's called a Postman collection version one file. And I'll have an example of that here. So I created this file based on a few requests and responses, and then I have this collection file, and this file is something you can upload with this API. There's an API key required, as you can see here. You see a method call here. Just scroll down, and you can see how this file is being created based on the requests and replies to that API, which to this API endpoint which I just showcased to you in Postman. So if I can collect this, I can then upload this file to the portal. So this is a way that you can create your custom connected RESTful API. You need to have a Swagger file available or this Postman file in case there isn't a Swagger file directly available for you. The next thing is kind of more general information. So you can upload your own icon if you like. So I've done this here. It's a little sun um, you can modify the background color. You can give a description. It will indicate what the host is and the base URL. So this is the first general tab you go through that wizard where you start doing the registration of your connector. The next tab or the next step in this process is the authentication security. How are you going to set that up based on the API you're consuming? So let's add here. You can see some of the the options, so there's no notification, uh, no authentication. You can have basic username, password. You can have an API key. That's the one I'm using in this case for this API to consume. And then this is based in the query parameters. So this is how you can set up to consume that API because this, this is the path to follow. If you also look at the Postman um, request I send out. And then you get to the definition itself. And here you can set up some of the actions and triggers. So here's this one, one action, it's get the weather forecast. In general, this, this might be that you find some different information in your summary and description when you import a file through Postman. So the Postman collection file again give you some other gibberish in summary and description. You have to do this yourself. So provide a summary, description, and the operation ID. So this will be visible once you use that connector in your logic app. Then you can further define on your operation what type it is, so what type of request. You can also import this from an example. So I'm using get, this is the request URL, so this is kind of all built up based on that collection file I imported. Here you have some of the query parameters, including that API ID. So when you do all this type of work, in the end you see that you once you set save or update connector, it will do the validation for you as well. It will tell you if it's a, if it works fine, so that you in, in the end have a connector in your logic app or not. So these are kind of the steps you can follow. You can create some multiple actions. You can even define triggers. So there's lots of things you can do in this wizard. Let's switch over to my logic app. So I created a very simple, straightforward logic app. Let's go to the designer. So I'm doing a HTTP request and a HTTP response. So when HTTP request is received based on a certain payload, then I calling my custom connector. So it will be available if you go for the connectors in general, because you'll find it in the list. So let's get into weather. And here you have it the weather connector. So that's my own custom connector I created. So I'll find it here. I can also use the one that Microsoft provided. This is a different one, but just, just to showcase how you can leverage your own connector in a logic app. So there's some of the query parameters here, including the app ID, and then I'm giving a response back, which is kind of the response of the connector. Be passed on, on the queries query parameters, it will call out that API and result back and it will be the result I pass back to the client. So if I call this, so let's switch over to the other one. This is the 
the endpoint, as you can see. So if you have HTTP uh, action trigger, you set up the payload by a JSON schema, and when you hit save, you get this endpoint. And this endpoint can be secured for API management. This is another one of the other uh, previous episodes in Middle of Friday, where I showed you how you can further uh, secure this endpoint using IP filtering and API management. But anyways, this is just to show you, you can call now this function. So I'm currently in Zurich and I kind of wonder, okay, what's the weather forecast for the next seven days? It's clear sky, it's clear sky. And I can further scroll. So that's pretty good weather here. There's gonna be a little bit rain later on in the week, but the first couple of days have clear sky. So that's great. So here you can see Simple request and it passes through to that connector is just to show that you can have a custom connector within your logic app. And the other thing I like to point out, and let me just that you can also, if the connector is not there, there are many managed connectors within Microsoft space within the integration. The integration program has created a lot of connectors, around 200, and um, every two, four weeks, multiple mo uh, new connectors are added, predominantly Azure services. But if there's other connectors you need within your Logic App, then for instance, uh, API Guru is a good uh, landing page where you can find and browse for a lot of APIs, which you can wrap into a connector within your Logic App. It's a great way of, of finding APIs which you can leverage within your Logic App. So what you just saw is that I used Postman to send out an HTTP request to my Logic App. That Logic App subsequently goes to the Open Weather Map API and it just leverages one function. It's to get weather forecast of a city and a country code and then a number of days. So I use seven. You can use up to one, up to 17 in this case. It sends the response back and then it's being forwarded to my client. So very basic stuff, and within that Logic App, I created a connector based on that open weather map. There's some benefits in, in this approach. The, it makes Logic App more valuable. It's more extendable. You can get more value out of your Logic App uh, with this type of extensibility, and it also enforces or provides a certain reuse as well of the connectors. So you can share these amongst uh, other teams in your in your enterprise, if you have multiple uh, multidisciplinary teams or DevOps teams that are kind of building their logic apps for certain purposes, then you can share some of your custom connectors between each other. So that's good value, good reuse. So those are the benefits. But there are also some concerns or, or, or challenges. One of being governance. So if there's multiple teams and they're all going to start building and cranking out logic apps and building their own connectors, then it wouldn't surprise you to, that there could be multiple teams building the same type of connectors. So if there's no communication or oversight of the complete developments and things people are doing within the teams, then you can get a wildfire of a lot of similar typed connectors. So that's something you need to do. That can, that's, a, that's a challenge, definitely. The other thing, and what I would call is a tunnel vision, if, if architects look at like, okay, hey, you know, We'll look at Logic Apps and now we have this, this extensibility mode with connectors. Hey, we kind of can now do anything we want using Logic Apps. This is kind of, you know, this is the flavor of the week. Uh, this is what we do from now on. But that can change again. But then it's, it kind of gives, sometimes it can give you the sense that, hey, we can do everything and anything using just Logic Apps by itself and not leveraging anything else. And that could be a, a pitfall. The other thing is if you start building custom APIs which you want to wrap as a connector within your Logic App, so in your end, in your integration solution, that could increase into lead time because you start developing stuff again. And the Logic App is more about, you know, event-driven, trigger-based, uh, a little bit of point and click and really get to a fast end result for your business. And if you start building APIs and then wrap them and have them in your Logic App, that can increase lead times. So you got to think about that too a little bit. The other thing is workloads. So is your API you build yourself and then wrapped as a connector in your Logic App built for the amount of workload you want to put on it? Maybe you're going to stress that API a bit too much and you get into throttling issues. 
or maybe you leveraging a third party API, which I just showed you, but there's a certain cap on it. You can only use it for a certain amount of calls per day or per week or per month for free. But then you might have need to have a paid SKU to do more if that's necessary. So that's another thing you that can be challenging. And the last but not least, it's also some of the security aspects. If there's, for instance, an API key involved, that API could expire, or maybe the third party would say, okay, we'll change it. Or if it's um, your own API and it has a certain key that needs to be shared, and that's going to be refreshed. So that's some of the things you have to think about with regards to leveraging that, that logic app connector within your logic app. So that's, again, it also falls back to, to, to governance a bit as well. I would definitely say check out the, the documentation around the, the custom connectors. Um, I've done this as well. So you, some of the steps I, I described earlier, and you can find those back within the documentation. Also some of the, how you secure it, how you describe the APIs using Postman, where you get that Postman collection file, which you then you can import when you register your custom connector, or maybe how you have to certify your connector. You'll find all that details within the documentation itself. So again, if you got some, some feedback around uh, the episodes that me and Kent are producing and putting out there for you guys, please let us know either using that email here, middle of Friday, I mean, middle of Friday at gmail.com or for our Twitter, please do. Um, or if there's any other topics you'd like us to discuss in our episodes, please feel free to, to express that. And I also like to thank Bistock 360 for being a great host for, for this show. Um, this is another episode. And if you've watched this, um, Integrate US is around the corner. Um, there's st you're still able to, to register for it. There's still tickets available. So if you still have some time in your agenda and you have some budget and you feel, hey, I want to learn a bit more about the current state of integration. There's some refresh content also available um, during Integrate. Um, it's not entirely similar as to London. So yeah, there's definitely some value there if you if you like to join us. So please do if you can. And I'll leave you some with the uh, music credits of this episode um, of the band called Enslave with their latest album, E.